Right now, it is time uh, for Brian Ross to join us with Real News. Brian joins us on a Thursday morning, and we take a look at news stories in and around uh, the world. Uh, good morning, Brian. How are you this morning? Once again, I'll yeah. tell you. It's, you know, I, uh, I say this over and over. I, um, I watch video clips. Uh, we're having a big fundraiser, by the way, in the Tri-State region on Saturday at ReFarm in Millerton uh, for uh, Ukraine. Uh, where all the funds 100% raised go to benefit uh, two different charities that are serving Ukraine. And you can go to our uh, Facebook page and see the links. But uh, it's a big fundraiser. from uh, uh, It runs from 12 to 3.30, uh, and more information can be found there. Now, I watch um, links uh, because uh, some people have given me some, some places I can go to see footage that is actually posted on the Internet by people from Ukraine and, and Russians. And what what strikes me, Brian, is that I it's just unbelievable to see a children's maternity hospital bombed. It's it un, to, to see the civilians being killed like they're being killed, uh, to see the Ukrainian soldiers being killed like they're being killed. But it also, I've seen some of the pictures of the Russian soldiers. These are kids. These are kids. Yeah. And these are kids that speak the same language as the people they're killing. Uh, and it's it's just heartbreaking, and I don't think in the world order, except for a few countries, Russia will ever recover from this while Vladimir Putin or anybody that supported this is alive. I don't think he can stay in power, and that Russia, Russia won't recover when he, as long as he's in power. And I think there are serious questions about war crimes, and of course one thing, the more we pile on like that against him, uh, the less incentive he has to stop what he's doing. It's it's just you know I it's just one of those situations and you know it's a powder keg even though they're at war now you know it's a powder keg because obviously the NATO allies are looking at this and all the bordering countries are looking at this and saying unless it's stopped here it's going to continue uh, so we're we're not anywhere near out of the woods as a world about this not in the least and I think you know uh, the first order of business is how to, how to, how does this end. And, uh, you know, does not end well because even with all the troops he has, it's not enough, obviously, to quell what's happening in Ukraine. He cannot uh, overtake this country as he wanted. And you've already seen an offer. If he could have three, just three territories, he would leave. Well, they're not going to give him three territories. Uh, I think they're going to push back. And uh, there's no clear end in sight. And the Ukrainians, uh, by their uh, will, their determination, their bravery, you know, have inspired the world. Uh, to stand up to this bully, and and we sit here and we look at this and we look back at history and and maybe this will be uh, the conflict. I doubt it. That just shows you as a as a superpower or a nuclear power, uh, uh, you know whether you're China, whether you're Russia, whether you're the United States. There's just no way you can step into a country uh, and force regime change without. Thousands of people dying without years and years of war. Uh, and, you know, when are, when are countries going to learn this lesson? Well, yes, but, you know, it, this, this would not happen. A democratic country would not be doing a land grab like this. Mm -hmm. it, only a dictator uh, can pull off this sort of operation, uh, quell his people, uh, fashion and tailor the information they're getting to make them think they're doing something right. I see reports this morning the death toll is huge now, up to six, 7,000. Russian soldiers, which would be the t uh, greater than the number of Americans killed in both Iraq and Afghanistan. It's yeah. true. It's, uh, and, and, and like I said, uh, even though the, uh, Russia has tried to shut down the Internet um, with um, a Starlink, uh, Elon Musk's uh, company, opening up Starlink so it can be used in Ukraine, uh, these videos are getting out. And the, the, the saddest video I saw was the Russian who was living in Ukraine, speaking to his father in Russia, explaining what was happening, and the father in Russia did not believe it. He, yes, he, he exactly did not right. believe it. Well, that's the power of information and the power of the ability to have, you know, pre prevail uh, with the disinformation. And uh, I think that uh, hats off to the Biden administration for putting out the word early and often. And now this latest warning that came out of the White House yesterday uh, stand by for him perhaps to use chemical weapons, which would be a disaster and, you know, just ampl amplifies the nature of the war crimes he's been committing. 
Well, we'll move away from Ukraine. I hate to, but we have to because there's other things. So we got our first uh, another conviction in the January 6th trial. But then, uh, and this is this is once again the Republican National Committee now is suing the January 6th subcommittee to block uh, subpoenas of their Salesforce records. I mean, you know, we've got some serious problems of our own in Washington. Without without a doubt, and uh, you know, this is not. A- a political discourse that took place there at the Republicans would like, like us all to believe, apparently, and talk about disinformation. Uh, and this January 6th committee has made uh, progress, but they still aren't close to a final report, and they still haven't held uh, the hearings and the public uh, sort of airing of the information they have so far, and I think they need to do that soon. Yeah, because the longer they wait, uh, the farther away it gets from the memories and minds of people, and then you say the information flow continues uh, from from uh, both sides and people get disconnected from it so there's that uh, and then there's a how do you think uh how do you think we are handling i, I you know thank goodness that we have a president in power that respects uh, uh europe and respects uh, the nato alliance uh, how do you think joe biden is handling i mean i mean there's some hiccups like poland and everything like this but i think the administration is doing a pretty good job uh sitting on top of a powder keg and trying to keep it from blowing up right and even i don't think poland was so much a hiccup i mean do you really want to be basing uh, fighters that go in to fight the russian jets from uh, U.S. air bases in Germany. I don't think you want to do that. Uh, and apparently there are no places where they can't find a place that would necessarily be safe inside Ukraine. I don't think the U.S. is opposed to the uh, jet fighters being loaned to Ukraine. It's just they cannot base and sortie out of an American airspace because that puts us right in the middle of it. And we do not want, and I think President Biden has done a masterful job of keeping us from going direct toe-to-toe with Russia because that's where the uh, people that do these tabletop exercises see it going quickly into a nuclear, and that's what nobody wants. Uh, and uh, in this country, I mean, we've got the Supreme Court nomination that is going to go forward, and there will be a fight on it, but the Democrats do have the votes in the Senate uh, uh, to get it through. But once again, this this should be something that just flies right through and, that, and shouldn't require anything else because this, right. this person was... And I agree. You know, I, don't, I don't even understand the Republican strategy there. Uh, since it's going to go through, uh, why do they want to pick a fight with a eminently qualified uh, woman who absolutely uh, has all the qualifications to be on the court, <laughs> notwithstanding their efforts to try to get her uh, law school test scores uh, made public? I don't know what that's all about. It's just meant to embarrass humiliate her, I guess. I don't think she can be embarrassed and shouldn't be. But uh, again, the Republican strategy, I mean, so-called, uh, you know, they've got these sharp minds. I don't I don't see it. I don't see them uh, being that sharp and trying to oppose her and trying to kick up a fuss there. I mean, that's not going to happen. They should face the reality of it. And the same thing with their uh, attacks on the January 6th uh, investigation. In both cases, I think they're they're fighting a losing battle there, and they have picked the wrong spot. And also, uh, a majority of Republicans voted for this person where she got her seat in the first place, her judgeship right, in the first exactly. place. That's, At least that's, three did, yes. And uh, um, Graham now says, uh, Lindsey Graham from South Carolina says he probably won't, but other Republicans have, have signed on. So I, I think that's, that's going to go through, and that's, you know, thank goodness for that. Uh, you know, uh, every time you look at some of those uh, elderly uh, Democratic senators and you wonder about their health, you know, one one heart attack away or one sort of, uh, you know, bad fall away from uh, the uh, Democrats losing control of the Senate. All right. And, uh, I, you know, it's when you look at the the investigative side of this, how do you think the networks are doing uh, in covering this? I, I watch a little bit of CNN, but like I said now, I, I got a couple of different websites where uh, I can get actual raw f- video footage out of what's coming out of Ukraine. Um, how do you think the networks are, co- are covering this? Well, this is a reminder that uh, what CNN does well and does best is, is this. When it comes to a very big international news story, uh, I think they're unsurpassed, and the, you know, the ratings that I've seen so far suggest uh, that the viewers think the same thing, that uh, others are you know, uh, not doing the kind of in-depth coverage with the uh, bench strength that CNN brings to uh, something like this. And as you've probably read, there's going to be a new boss at the CNN 
who, strangely enough, was the executive producer of the Stephen Colbert show, but he is highly regarded and has indicated already he's going to steer the network uh, more away from opinion that used to be sort of their evening programming and closer to hard news, which I think everyone would appreciate. And so uh, this is their this is their time to shine. And frankly, I think CNN has done a superb job. All right, Brian. It's always great to chat with you on a Thursday morning. Uh, have a great week, and we'll speak to you All next right, week. All right, stay warm. Talk next week. All right, take care, uh, Brian Ross, and Real News here on the Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio. And you can find uh, Real News at RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Real News with Brian Ross.